My name is Graham Atwell. I'm going to talk you through some slides made by Jenny, Jenny Bimrose from the University of Warwick. And what we're talking about is high quality LMI. How can you tell that this labour market information is really good? Well, first of all, there's a few basic questions we're going to look at. One's who's produced the LMI? Who's the people behind it? How was it collected? How is the labour market data broken down or disaggregated? And how is it classified? Is the labour market information up to date? And is it fit for the purpose you want to use it for? First of all, let's look at who's produced it. Well, straightforward question. Is the source trustworthy? And we know in the age of fake news that not, not every data source can be trusted. Good data sources, people like the Office of National Statistics probably produce quite good data. But other data from newspapers can be a bit dodgy sometimes. What's the aims and objectives of the authors? Why did they produce this data? What was their purpose in producing it? And is it possible to get similar information from another source? If you can, you can check the data to make sure it's coming up with the same things. Now, how was it collected? How and why were the data collected? How did they do it? Was it an online survey? We know online surveys have all kinds of bias written, uh, built into them. Uh, or was it face to face? Did they collect it? Did they do a survey? How was it done? What's the methodology for collecting the data? What's the sample size? How many people did it come from? What's the coverage and degree of detail available? Is it just based on one city? Is it based on a whole country? Is it based on a region? How much detail does that data really give us? And once more, are there other sources available for comparison? Think about both the reliability of the data. Is it reliable data? And as it valid data, does it answer the questions it says it's going to answer? How's it disaggregated? How's the data disaggregated and how's it classified? Are the boundaries for the measurement valid? Are they useful, those boundaries? And how are the boundaries being defined? And then there's the question of the classification systems. Now, classification systems are tricky. In the UK, we have two main ones used around labour market data. One is the SIC, Standard Industrial Classification, and one standard occupational classification. If you're trying to find out about occupations, then quite obviously standard occupational classification is the more relevant. And the word of warning, classification systems can change over time. So you need to be aware of that if you're trying to compare data which comes over some time span. Is it up to date? Uh, census has produced wonderful data, but of course they're only produced once every 10 years in the UK. And by the time it's published, it can be quite out of date. When was the research undertaken and published, which is based on the, the data? What period does the data relate to? Is it useful for current situations? Or are you going to have to say, well... The particular, say, we were looking at uh, computer occupations, they've changed a lot in the last 10 years. So data from 10 years ago may, great, may be well out of date. In other occupations, they may be not changed too much. I'm trying to think of one, hairdressing probably hasn't changed a lot over the last 10 years if we're looking at the skills involved. And how frequently is data updated? And also, how timely is it? How long does it take from the updating to be published in any particular data source? 